What's up guys? In this video we're going to be looking at how to find the eigenvalues and how to find the corresponding basis for the eigenspace that corresponds to each eigenvalue. Um, <clears throat> so I'm already assuming that you have a baseline understanding of like what these things are and I have a video on my channel, it's only four minutes long, that really easily summarizes like what these things mean in like in context of linear transformations and the, the geometry and like visualizing these things. So um, once you've watched that video, come back here and you should it should make a lot more sense uh, some from some of the things that I'm saying. So consider this linear transformation A. It takes a vector in R2 and spits out a vector in R2, and it's described by the matrix below. So let's let V be some vector in R2, and we are trying to find that vector v after we apply a linear transformation right which is the same thing as just taking that vector v multiplying it by our matrix a that's our linear transformation we want this to be equal to some constant which we'll call lambda times the vector that we started with right that's exactly what we were saying in the first video right so let's just do a little bit of rearranging here a times V minus, and then I'm gonna write lambda times the identity matrix, um, the two by two identity matrix, uh, just so we can see it's a little bit more clearly what we're doing here. So now we can factor out a V and you'll see that we have a matrix, which is A minus lambda times V, or sorry, lambda times I, it's my bad multiplied by some vector v and this is equal to the zero vector. So what we have here is just a homogeneous system, right? A, ma a, a matrix vector product that's a homogeneous system and we know how to solve things like this. We've done this like all the time when we have like ax equals b, right? This is like going back to like row reducing and like reading off our system our solutions from a system of equations. We're basically doing the same thing here. But so what I want to do, okay, let's Let's write out a minus uh, lambda i. Remember, the identity matrix just has ones in every entry of the diagonal. Every other entry is a zero. So if I were to subtract these matrices, I would just end up with subtracting lambda from each of my diagonals. And all the other entries would stay the same. Three, two. So I have this matrix here. And remember, we're trying to like confine this linear transformation such that it that we transform it onto like a a line basically so in other words when we're thinking of like determinant we can think of determinant as like how much we scale our vector space by right so if we had a determinant of 2 then it means that like we're stretching out the entire vector space by like a factor of two. So when we have a determinant equal to zero, it basically means that we're squishing it into like a lower dimension. So we're taking R2 and in this case, we're, we're trying to constrict it onto a line. And that's sort of similar to what we're doing, right? Where we're trying to find that vector V such that um, it's gonna result in like the, the output of the linear transformation being on the same span of that vector, right? And if none of this makes sense, then I highly recommend going to watch that quick four minute video that I put on my channel. Um, so what we're doing here, in order to solve for values of lambda, which this holds true, we need the determinant of that matrix to be equal to zero. <clears throat> so let's take the determinant. It's a two by two matrix, so it, it's not too hard. So I've got zero equals, and we've got one minus lambda times two minus lambda minus three times two. Okay, so this will be two, and then I've got minus two lambda minus lambda. So this is minus three lambda plus lambda squared minus six. So this will equal lambda squared minus three lambda, minus four, okay? So this will be lambda minus four and lambda plus one, right? So solving this, we have lambda equals four, 
and we have lambda equals negative one. So these values here, this being number one, this being lambda two, these here are my eigenvalues, right? So the equation holds true when I have a v times four v, this is true. And a v equals negative one times v. We know that that is also true, right? And so that's that's what this tells us. And what what did I title this video? So how to find eigen right? So basis of eigenspace. So we'll do that in this video as well. So finding the basis of an eigenspace. How do we do this? Okay. So what we're gonna do? Let's take let's take our um, our values here, our eigenvalues, and let's solve for the eigenspace, right? We're basically going to solve our matrix for the solutions, right? So let's take lambda lambda two equals four, okay? And I'm going to solve a minus four times i, right? This will give me a matrix, and let's scroll up here. One minus four. That's going to be negative three, two minus four, negative two, right? Okay. Uh, cool. So when I row reduce this, the row reduce form will be one, negative two thirds, and then row of zeros here, right? And this is a homogeneous system, so reading the solutions off of our matrix we know that that our solution let's, let's just call this uh, v2 this would be t times two-thirds one where t is some constant right so we can say that the the basis oops the the basis for the eigenspace that corresponds to lambda equals four is just that vector there, right? Because that vector there will span the entire solution space. Okay, so let's do the let's do the exact same thing that we did for uh, our other value of lambda, which is negative one. Okay, so I've got. Oops. I've got lambda equals negative one. So a minus negative one times i. This is going to be equal to two, two, three, three. If you were to row reduce this, you should get one, one, zero, zero. You can tell this right away. Since both equations <coughs> are just scalar multiples, they're the same equation. So Let's simplify that first row, okay? And then reading the solutions the same exact way that I would do off of the first one, right? So let's do s times negative one, one, where s is some real number. So therefore, the the basis for the eigenspace that corresponds to um, lambda equals negative one would be equal to this vector, negative one, one. And in the next video, we're gonna take a look at the process called diagonalization. And um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it for this video. Okay, I will see you in the next one.